one of the biggest things I've learned over the last month is that you can't expect to run fast for a really long time if you don't run fast for a really long time. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Drew. I'm an amateur runner in Flagstaff, Arizona. This is the Build to Berlin series about my build up to the Berlin Marathon. I'm getting close, so this is what I did over the last month. Let's go. been about a month since my last video uh, was very busy with some work travel and uh, running and family stuff going on in my last video I was dealing with a little bit of injury management and trying to just run as much as I could copper ready go <sighs> he doesn't go get it and I'm lucky that a lot of the injury issues that I've had have um, been managed pretty well and I've been able to keep running and over the last month or so, I've been able to manage a significantly higher volume. So I'll talk a little bit about how much mileage I've been running, what are the workouts I've been doing, and what is the purpose of those workouts and what I'm trying to achieve over the last month or so. Right now, I am a few weeks away from the Berlin Marathon, approaching three weeks. So I've got another long run that's significant this weekend, and then I'll be kind of starting my gradual taper next week into... Uh, a hard taper the following week and then race week. One of the biggest things I've learned over the last month is that you can't expect to run fast for a really long time if you don't run fast for a really long time. And that's something I've been trying to practice in my workouts. Drop it. Go. And I'll tell you what that looks like on paper, but the reality is I was just trying to get a lot more threshold, both like marathon threshold, LT1, uh, lactate threshold one and, uh, actual lactate threshold or like the lower end, which would be LT two, which is closer to like a, an hour race pace. Again, I live at 7,000 feet. So that's always a factor. And, um, I try and just manage my effort and go really effort based and less on pace because, uh, at altitude you can really suffer if you get your pacing wrong. So my, my focus has been just a lot more sustained efforts, um, I had a little bit of travel. I also went to Salt Lake City, which is at 4,500 feet, was able to get a good workout in there as well. And um, I tested my fitness up here with uh, Sarah Hall on Lake Mary, which um, was like a really big workout. And I felt amazing. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. <clears throat> after my last video, uh, I ended up getting a little bit sick after my trip to San Francisco. And the funny thing about the illness was I, it was actually pretty bad, really feverish, kind of like COVID body symptoms, maybe like a flu symptom. And, oh man, get the ball. It's over here. Ready? And after being sick, um, you <laughs> oh, yeah. but funny enough, the week of that illness, I actually had a pretty high mileage week. I think I ran about 82 miles that week. And it was really mostly easy running. And then on the weekend, I had an opportunity to um, to get out and do a long run with bike support from my wife. Uh, it was We never get to do that, so that was cool for us. We got to hang out, and uh, she helped me out quite a bit. I'm usually out here by myself. <clears throat> Go get it. It was really helpful to have the support of my wife. She was there to talk, and like it wasn't a very hard run, so I was just running – kind of like easy steady easy for about two and a half hours it was like almost 23 miles and I haven't been good at doing long runs like that in the past and so just being out there and getting the time on my feet was great and just a couple days after that I did a progression at Buffalo Park which was also like in a really good zone I tried to stay like marathon effort but I ended up just kind of progressing to a little bit more of a threshold effort and uh, working out at Buffalo Park is really hard so there's kind of just like really steady, consistent up and downs on a two mile loop. And so I looped it three times and just kind of progressed through each loop. I actually felt really good on that run. And I kind of compare it to when I first moved here a couple years ago. And I, I tried to do workouts at Buffalo Park and I just was so bad. I could like barely manage a six minute mile uh, 
pace on a tempo at Buffalo Park. And on this, I felt like really just a moderate effort doing, you know, working down to like 540, 530 pace toward the end. And that was kind of eye opening about uh, how far you can come over the long term, where a lot of people tend to focus on where they're at in the short term. I want to do this workout by this date and it's only like a few months away. I want to race this fast in December and it's currently August. I think having like the short term goals is good as long as they're realistic, but then over the long term, I think most people underestimate how far they can go with just being really, really consistent. And uh, so I've really benefited from that. And I think like just a mindset shift for, um, for people who are like hyper focused on the short term uh, can make a huge difference in the long term. Copper, bring your ball. When I went to Utah, I did a 10K tempo at about 4,500 feet, which is Salt Lake City elevation. So I, it's a little bit easier to work out at that elevation where it's, it's not like it's considered kind of lower elevation where Flagstaff is 7,000. Utah is at like four to 5,000 in the Salt Lake area. Uh, so I got a little bit of gains from going down there and I did just 10K continuous and I averaged like 535 and it felt pretty good. Um, and that was in the middle of like work travel and stress. And again, the focus there is really just longer sustained efforts around like a threshold pace and just building that, um, that aerobic capacity and the, the lactate clearance through the lactate threshold. Then I got home before the weekend and on Sunday I did a 20 mile run, like toward the end of it, I did five by three K. It was like, you know, maybe like six minute miles up here for the first kilometer on the three K repeats. And then the second kilometer of those three K I do like a five fifty pace. And then on the third, I do like a five forty pace. And that was kind of just to test like how I'd feel cycling through a marathon effort and then something a little bit faster and then going back and recovering at like something a little more steady, like just above that, um, that marathon pace. And I did that toward the end of the 20 mile run just because where's your ball. I did that toward the end of the 20 mile run for obvious reasons. I wanted to simulate a little bit of, uh, cycling through gears toward the end of a race and 20 miles for me has been a pretty uh, solid effort where if I go over that 20 miles, I feel like I'm like that 22 and a half, 23 mile run I did. It felt like a really long time, but around 20 uh, feels pretty good. So like that 30K mark, I'm trying to feel really, really strong around 30K in my long runs because in the past, one of my biggest weaknesses has uh, been executing on long runs and honestly kind of like wimping out uh which i've been trying to work around the way i've been working around it is just running longer every single weekend so i try and get at least 30k which is like 18 and a half miles 18.7 miles uh every weekend uh during this like kind of 10 week period during marathon training midweek after that i did like a kind of some steady running which if i'm feeling a little bit fatigued and i don't really want to do a hard workout because I feel like I need more recovery. Uh, but it's midweek and maybe I have another workout planned on the weekend. I'll try and just do some steady running, which where my heart rate is not super high and I'm not straining and my legs aren't tired, but it's just like kind of like right on that marathon threshold for maybe like six to eight miles during the week. And so that's what I did midweek, but I kind of cut from marathon pace down to like a threshold and so pretty kind of an easier session. Then that Friday, I did a long threshold with Sarah Hall and Ryan on the bike on Lake Mary Road. And uh, that was awesome. I was super nervous because Sarah Hall is obviously a beast and I am not <laughs> on her level. She's a 220 marathoner. And uh, I still my last marathon I ran uh, 241. So I haven't run a marathon in a really long time. Uh, I haven't run a, like a long tempo like that really ever at that intensity. And it's also at 7,000 feet. So that was pretty intimidating. I went into it saying, okay, I'm going to do about 10 miles, see how I feel. And, but in the back of my head, I was like, don't be a wimp and just do the whole run. So, um, luckily I felt really, really good. And I surprised myself around 10 miles like Ryan turned to me and said, okay, that's 10. Are you good? And I just 
kind of kept going. I got a little bit of a, a stitch around like mile 13. So I stopped, she did total 15. I stopped for like a third of a mile, um, just to work out the stitch. And then I jumped back in. So I did like just under 15 miles total at a 544 average at 7,000 feet. And for me, I usually get off my marathon pace up here. I usually get like 15 to 20 seconds because I'm relatively new to altitude. And also it's kind of standard to get about 18 seconds uh, off of your pace at 7,000 feet versus your pace at sea level. So meaning a 545 here in Flagstaff could potentially translate to feeling comfortable at 525 at sea level. I'm still like feeling out what that means, but I'm going to be just pretty cautious in the marathon and uh, know that just in case if that 545 pace down at sea level feels really easy, the feeling like confident that I've done a workout where um, I can just work down to like a pretty, pretty hard pace around like a 530 and hopefully still not be working too hard. And two days after that, I was kind of questioning whether or not I should do a long run that weekend, like a really long run because of how hard that Friday run was. But that was supposed to be my peak week. I was tracking toward about 90 miles. If I was going to finish a two and a half hour run on the weekend, um, I lifted after the, the run with Sarah on Friday and I lifted targeting my quads mostly. So doing like a lot of squatting, um, and a few like hinge, type motions so like like single leg rdls and um some kettlebell swings and my quads just ended up getting wrecked so like on sunday i went out for what was going to be two and a half hours and i ended up um just having like so much quad pain uh not pain like injury pain but just like my quads were just totally wrecked and tired uh it did a good job of simulating that end of the marathon feeling where you have to like really push through a lot of pain in your quads and, and your legs but I did stop around like, I think it was two hours and eight minutes. Um, and that was just like an easier, steady, easy long run. But I still got like 19 miles plus, And um, that was like a really good effort figuring out how to run on tired legs uh, for a long time. So I'm, I'm actually really happy with that. And I ended the week at like 87 miles. 87 miles is the most I've ever run in my life. Um, probably will be for a little while longer, <laughs> but, um, but that was like a fantastic peak week. Ended that Epsom salt bath, ice cream, lots of sleep for a few days and rolled into this week. And then this week I, I actually tried out the Metaspeed Sky Paris in the Metaspeeds. I did four by three K around threshold, uh, like LT two. So like faster end of threshold. And then, uh, I did four by 200, which I haven't even run any like 200s, 300s uh, or anything quicker in this marathon block because of my Achilles issues I've had. And so I like actually got on my toes today and ran, you know, sub five minute pace for uh, a few 200s and I felt really good. And I had a little bit of soreness afterward, but once I lifted, it kind of like stretched out that area in my ankle. And uh, I actually felt fine. That was a little bit of a good test. Metaspeeds felt good. I'm still questioning whether I'll run in the Metaspeed or the, um, the Alpha Fly 3, but I've got time to figure that out. And I'll probably do a couple more runs in each one and try and narrow down which one feels better at marathon pace. Uh, the Metas Metaspeeds actually felt really, really good once I got up on my toes and there was like tons of energy return at that pace. But then at threshold, I felt like maybe the alpha fly has a little bit more energy return, which would be good for the marathon. Um, so if that's the case, maybe the meta speeds like a 10 K shoe or a half marathon shoe for me and the marathon, maybe I'll go with the alphas, but, um, still TBD and that's it for the last month. So I've averaged, uh, probably like 85 miles or so. Um, I, I did 82, 83, 87. And then this week I'm tracking toward like 85. That's pretty high for me over the last four weeks. Uh, over the last 10 weeks, I probably averaged 80 or so because I, I took a little bit of a dip in the middle because of my Achilles issues into like 70s and high 60s and then gradually ramped back up. Super happy with this build. Now it's just time to like coast on down into Berlin Marathon and make sure my travel's on point, my recovery's on point and uh, try and rip a fast marathon. 
All right, I appreciate you tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna do a video on my taper, and then after that, I'll have a race video from Berlin. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace, happy running.